If you recall from before, both engines are protected from certain problems by the electronic engine governors, or EEGs. Such protection can be the difference between making it back to base or staying out in the field of combat, so it is wise to check these prior to launching. We will test both the gas generator RPM limiter as well as the power turbine overspeed protection. Let's look at the rear section of the wall panel, right by where we turn the EEGs on and off. And next to them we will find both test switches, identified by the EEG GG test label, both capped to avoid undesired switch movement. We begin with the gas generator test. I am going to conduct it in a slightly different manner than outlined in the DCS Black Shark flight manual, although the outcome will be the same. Okay, let's uncap the EEGG test gas generator switch and turn it to its test position away from the operational position. Moving our view back to facing forward, we're going to reduce engine throttle to idle one at a time so that the other engine is forced to work harder. This will allow the gas generator RPM protection to kick in and will be evidenced by the right hand power set limit and left hand power set limit yellow warning lights on the right overhead warning light panel, which will indicate a successful test. So starting with the left EEG tests, let's reduce the right engine throttle to idle by using the keyboard shortcut right shift and page down twice. Let's go ahead and check the right overhead warning light panel. And there it is, left hand power set limit is on. And the left engine marker in the engine power indicator, which is over here, has spiked up, while the right engine marker is very low. Good test. Let's return the right engine throttle to auto by right shift and page up twice. Let it stabilize and move the left engine throttle to idle using right out and page down twice. Notice the engine power indicator showing the spike on the right engine power and the right hand power set limit yellow warning light on the right overhead warning light panel. Alright, we're done here. Let's return the gas generator switch to the operational position, cap it, and move on to the next test, the power turbine overspeed. Now, recalling the explanation from before that the actual power turbine overspeed protection will automatically shut down the affected engine. This will not happen during our test. All we will see is warning light indications as well as Betty's voice letting us know of the overspeed, not a real overspeed. Don't worry, no engines will be heard during the filming of this lesson. A word of caution. Prior to performing this test, both engine throttles must be moved to idle, otherwise you will get a real overspeed protection and engine shutdown, from which the engine will not awake until maintenance has had their way with it. So let's put both engines at idle throttle by hitting page down three times and cross-tracking on our levers in the cockpit. There we go. Now let's go to the wall panel and uncap the EEG GG test power turbine test switch. Then move it away from the operational position to FT1. We will now increase the throttle on the left engine two notches from idle to auto by using right out and page up twice. After the engine spools up, it will trigger a left-hand engine overspeed warning on the left forward panel together with a master warning light and the RO warning left engine turbine overspeed twice, followed by the right-hand engine overspeed light and the RO warning right engine turbine overspeed twice. So let's give it a try. Right out and page up twice. Watch a ground. Watch a ground. Left engine turbine overspeed. Left engine turbine overspeed. Right engine turbine overspeed. Right engine turbine overspeed. Notice that even though we have only increased the throttle on the left engine, both engine protection systems are tested. What you should take away from this is that you can use either engine to test the protection. We can now return the left engine to idle, so let's hit right out and page down twice. Okay, this was indeed a successful test, but only of the first channel. Since we used the left engine for the first channel, let's use the right engine for the second channel. 
So, wall panel, switch into the FT2 position, and we'll repeat the procedure, but this time we'll bring the right engine throttle to auto. So let's use right shift and page up twice. Watch a ground. Watch a ground. Right engine turbine overspeed. Right engine turbine overspeed. So this time we will see the right hand engine overspeed first. Left engine turbine overspeed. Left engine turbine overspeed. Followed by the left side. Okay, good test. So let's leave the right engine throttle in auto. Let's move the EEG test switch to operational. Cap it. And move the left engine throttle to auto with right out and page up twice. Let's cross check. Levers look good. RPM is at around 90%. Good test. Our next test is significant since it tests the rotor RPM readjustment, which we will have to do during an auto rotation. The switch that controls this is on the collective. And since DCS Black Shark does not have click points on the collective, we'll have to remember this keyboard shortcut. Luckily, it is one of the shorter ones. Simply write out and the numeric keypad plus sign for nominal RPM, and write out and numeric keypad minus sign for low RPM. The switch was in the nominal position when we got in the cockpit, and so it's where it rests now. So let's move it to low RPM and check that the rotor RPM drops to 84%. Right out, numpad minus, there's the rotor RPM decrease, and looks good, 84%. You may get the low RPM caution light or zebra light, and you may even have it permanently on your cockpit when doing this. That's perfectly acceptable, although it does not need to come on to indicate a good test. Alright, let's return the rotor to nominal RPM by using right out and numpad plus and RPM increase about 90%. Perfect. Both engines are running in auto throttle right now, which means both generators are powering the electrical buses. So let's go ahead and disconnect the external power by making sure our SPU-9 is set to ground crew, and calling maintenance with backslash, F10, F4, then F2 for electrical power off. Five, zero, one. Request to turn off ground power. Okay. Ground power is now off. Okay, there's the call from ground saying they have disconnected the ground power. So let's go to the wall panel and turn off the external AC and the external DC. And let's also make sure that our inverter is set to the auto position, which is the up position. Perfect. This means we're done with the after start checks. Next, let's do the before taxi tasks. They are arranged in a very straightforward flow, so that the more you do them, the less you need to refer to this checklist, and the more it makes sense. We will start from the left side of the cockpit, running through the forward panels, then through the top of the wall panel, onto the auxiliary panel, back through the bottom of the wall panel or right panel, and finish up on the overhead. Okay, starting on the targeting mode control panel, bottom row, left to right. Let's turn on the K041, leave the helmet mounted side off, and we'll leave the system in auto track, put the laser in standby, and leave the weapon system mode selector in Canon MOV. We will not yet select any type of targets. These are done over here. If you're deploying on a mission and have intelligence already identifying what you will be shooting at, and the likelihood is that it's going to be a ground target, then you can select that before departure. In our case, we won't press any for now. To finish up on the target mode control panel, we select if we want our weapon system to be in training mode or not over here. Training mode will allow you to work the weapon system like you would on a real mission, but will not fire any weapons. We will leave our training mode off.